Sara Yiga processes her coffee here in Ethiopia before exporting it. She says while the current performance of Ethiopian coffee exports is commendable, it could be even better if it wasn't focused more on green coffee. The amount of earning from value addition while we keep most of the foreign currency here, at, uh, most of the value here, we as kind of three, four, five fold, depending on the, the grade of coffee we export. It's not like the green coffee where the market is set at New York or London for Robusta. It is, I negotiate, I set the price when it is value added. The export of unprocessed coffee is faster and easier for many business people. But new entrants in the sector like Dagmawit Ainalem are eyeing the value addition lane as tough as it is. Yeah, I'm not trying to say that what we do is a little bit difficult, but honestly it's difficult. It's not easy to be in the sector to add value addition. It, it needs a lot of time, it needs energy. It comes with lots of components, the branding, looking for the right materials, looking for the right place to sell your product because you don't want it to be in all over the shelves or in all over the supermarkets. In the past 12 months, Ethiopia has exported 300,000 tons of coffee. This has attracted $500 million more from the average annual earnings. Experts say the price of coffee is more attractive globally now that Brazil, a major exporter, is limited in supply because of crop failures. The Ethiopian Coffee and Tea Authority says part of the reasons why the country is doing well internationally in terms of exports is because of diversification of markets, especially to the new arising Asian markets. For instance, China is reportedly making more demand for Ethiopian coffee. Sarah says Africa is the next big market for coffee, for African coffee producers. But countries must invest in training citizens how to do complete farm to cup processes. We have the product, they know more about the product. Okay? So they set the tone. The consumers are driven by the, cons the importers on that side. They, they tell stories, they set the tone and how coffee should be consumed. So what should we do? <laughs> no? We have to upgrade ourselves in terms of skills, education, capacity. We have the product, there is a school somewhere else. We don't have the school. We don't have centers to uh, I mean, educate professionals. Ethiopia, Africa's biggest producer of Arabica coffee, has launched a 15-year coffee development strategy aiming to maximize the country's coffee production capacity. And those who have tested the value of processed coffee on the market, like Sarah, hope that the new policy will give more support to people to process the coffee here at home. Coletanjohi, CGTN, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia.